by starting off with a blank control board, I am gonna quickly wire in every component one at a time. We're gonna come up with a list of components one by one in sort of like electrical order. I'm gonna share with you guys some approaches that these guys use to take this list and just keep breaking it down into smaller and smaller and smaller sections so that they can find that problem right away. So let's get started. So here we have a burner shutoff switch, we have a junction box here, we have a door switch for a furnace here, and we have a control board. Now we already have a list going now, right away, right off the bat. Our first source is the breaker all the way back to the electrical panel, so that's point one. Our burner shutoff switch is point number two, the power goes through there, the power goes through our door switch, that's point number three, and now it comes onto our control board. Now when I put power on this control board and I use my multimeter to test, for power anywhere else on this board. First place and the only place I get power is on the primary side of my transformer. So now I have the primary side of my transformer hooked up coming from the board and it's gonna come to this little Molex plug here that goes back into the board and that's my secondary side, that's my 24 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the board. I'm now gonna put power on it and the only place I have power here now is on the inlet to where the three or five amp fuse goes into the control board. So I have my power back off. I'm gonna go ahead and put my three amp fuse back into the board. I'm gonna restore power. And the one place I have power now from the fuse is in a little section of the board right here where a harness gets hooked up. And the one spot I'm getting power is labeled LIMI. Now what that means is a limit input. That is a 24 volt signal that goes out to limit switches. So I have the harness over here, we can see. Now we got a bunch of wires coming off of it, but we're only looking for that one wire that hooks up to that limit input spot right there. And when I trace that wire out, we come to two devices. We come to our fan limit switch, all right? This sits down right on the casing of the blower motor, and we have our high limit switch, and this sits right inside the furnace near the heat exchanger. So if the heat exchanger ever overheat, it would break open this circuit, and the control board would not receive that circuit back. So right next to the limit input, we have a terminal laid limit output, and that is the other red wire on our harness here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this harness in. Let's see where power goes from there. Next place I find power is on the R terminal, and I get my 27 volts there. Now this is where the thermostat wiring gets hooked in. So burner switch, door switch, control board, primary on the transformer, secondary on the transformer, fuse, goes to our fan limit switch, the high limit switch, and now finally to our R terminal. So let's go ahead and wire in a thermostat. Now I have my three wires coming off of my terminals here on the board. I got my red for my 24 volt power. I have the green, which is for the blower motor, and the white, which is for heating. So the red's gonna go onto the R terminal. The white's gonna go to W, and the green to the G terminal for our blower. So now we have power coming up to the R terminal on our thermostat, and it's just kind of sitting there doing nothing because the thermostat's not calling for heating, not calling for cooling. So I'm gonna turn my thermostat into heating mode, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the power from the R terminal and send it over to the W terminal, and that's gonna send power back to the board on the white wire to the W terminal there. So I should now have 27, 24 volts here at our W terminal, which I do. So the first thing that is powered from there is going to be our inducer motor. Right, so that's the beginning of the startup sequence is the inducer motor. Now our inducer motor is wired into the board. I'm going to put the thermostat back in heating mode and that should activate the inducer motor. There we go. All right, so the next place we have power is on these orange wires here coming back out of this harness we hooked up earlier. And those orange wires go to the pressure switch. So let's go ahead and wire that in. Now the uh, pressure switch is wired in. Uh, the board is gonna send 24 volts to the terminal when the inducer motor starts. The inducer motor is going to pull a slight pressure drop across this hose that's hooked up to the pressure switch and that's going to close the contact in here in this switch and that 24 volts is then going to be sent back to the board again so let's go ahead and we'll turn the power back on turn our thermostat back up the heat the motor runs we have 27 volts going in 
we have 27 coming out. Now we have power and our hot surface igniter. Here we have our hot surface igniter. It's now plugged into the board. I'm gonna go ahead, turn heat on at the thermostat again. Reducer motor comes on. Our pressure switch is made. And we have power on our hot surface igniter and we should start to see that glow. And there we go. So when our hot surface igniter lit up, there was a little bit of a time delay to allow the igniter to get hot enough. And then it sent power out from that little harness we hooked up earlier. And this is going to our flame rollout switches. These are all the switches down by the burner fronts where it detects flame if it rolls back out of the furnace. So it's gonna go through all those flame rollouts and it's gonna go right into the gas valve here. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to put the heat back on my thermostat. So there's our high surface igniter starting to glow and we should hear our gas valve click and see some voltage on here. There we go. And our gas valve is now open and the job now goes to our flame sensor. So let's go ahead and put that in. So here's my flame sensor. I have it hooked up to the board. I have the power off now. And when this thing is active, it's gonna have about 90 to 100 volts on it. So once the gas valve opens, it's going, this flame rod is gonna use the flame to send a little bit, very, very small amount of amperage through the flame and onto the ground of the uh, furnace itself in the box. So that little amperage draw, the, the control board is gonna pick up on that and then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna activate the blower motor. So the blower motor is pretty much the last step in the whole process. So here we go, we have our entire list now. Let's, now let's talk about diagnostics. All right, so now that we got our complete list, let's go ahead and put it up on the screen and let's go out on a hypothetical service call to see how knowing just this stuff right here can help you very quickly find a problem. So we're going out on a no heating call and the customer says they put on the heat on the thermostat and absolutely nothing happens. So you walk up to thermostat, you verify there's heat. You take the thermostat off the wall and you check for power at your R terminal and you have power at your R terminal at your thermostat. Now, what does this mean? If you look at the list, if you have power at the R terminal at your thermostat, everything before that is probably working just fine. So you can eliminate everything off that list. So where does the power go from there? We know on a call for heat, it goes over to the W terminal and then down to the control board W terminal there. So if you were to check for power down there, you don't have power. So everything after that pretty much is not in the picture right now because none of that stuff's gonna do anything without a call for heat. So now we know it's either one of two problems, either the thermostat itself or it's the, the white wire going down to the W terminal from the thermostat. It's one of those two things. And this is how these lists, knowing the sequence, knowing the wiring, can help you very quickly find a problem. So I hope that helped you guys out. Please let me know if it did and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.